Hello and welcome to another of the Richardson Lectures on the Challenge of Resource Management. This time we're looking at a specific example of a large-scale agricultural development and that example is going to be Thonic Earth. Now it's important we're going to, to explain the strategies used by Thonic Earth to efficiently produce food on a large scale and also to assess the advantages and disadvantages of this development. Now firstly, why are we looking at this? Well, in the previous video we looked at lots of different strategies used to increase food supply. But this video is going to look at a specific example of a large scale agricultural development. Now it's really important that you do not confuse this example with another example we'll look at in a couple of videos time when we look at agroforestry in Mali. That's an example of a local scheme in a low income country or newly emerging economy to increase sustainable food supplies. It's important you don't get your examples mixed up, as we'll see later when we look at an exam question on this. So first of all, what is Thanet Earth? Well, Thanet Earth is a large-scale agricultural development down in Kent, in, uh, in Thanet in Kent, in the southeast of England. Uh, it's a relatively new development, only it's that construction back in 2007. And at the moment, it consists of six large greenhouses, each the size of ten football pitches. So this is a large-scale development. And there is a seventh uh, greenhouse also being planned. Now, Planet Earth is producing salad vegetables, uh, such as tomatoes, peppers and cucumbers. And one of the reasons why it came about was because until they developed to Planet Earth, salad production was actually falling significantly in the UK. We were struggling to compete with European rivals, such as the Netherlands and Spain, um, with a warmer climate, uh, much better for growing salad vegetables. It's hard to compete with those kind of countries. But now Planet Earth has 400 million tomatoes each year. So how does it do it? Well, as we mentioned, it's, it's all grown in greenhouses. It's a controlled environment. Now, Planet Earth produces food th all the way throughout the year. Um, it uses hydroponic technology. So that's where the plants are not needing a soil to grow. And instead, they're growing in a water uh, and nutrient-rich solution. And they're also being grown vertically in, uh, in these tall greenhouses. And much of the water that's being used for the hydroponic system is actually harvested from the greenhouse roofs, the recycling water, a bit of a sustainable feature there. Um, now obviously being down in Kent, uh, it benefits from the, the sunny climate, one of the sunniest parts of uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, however, they also make use of artificial light so that they can produce food all year round in that controlled environment. Uh, and then another feature that makes them sustainable uh, is that they don't use pesticides. Pesticides are very expensive, but they're also very damaging from the environment because once they leak out uh, of this control environment, uh, there's a real risk uh, of impacting uh, local water supplies and soils. Uh, and so instead, they actually uh, employ uh, good insects. They bring in uh, insects that will eat the pest insects, such as green flies. So they will, uh, that natural predator prey relationship will take care of the pests without having to use artificial uh, pesticides and allow them to continue to produce a healthy crop. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages then of, of Thanet Earth? Well, the big economic one to start with is that it's created over 500 jobs. I've mentioned before that, particularly in high-income countries, farming is actually not a job that employs uh, too many people anymore as a result of uh, the high use of machinery now. We, we don't need as many labourers on farms. However, this large-scale development, uh, with all the technology it's uh, using, does create lots of jobs, foundry jobs there for local people. And, of course, being in that controlled environment, it's allowing us to produce uh, salad vegetables all the way throughout the year reducing the amount of imports we need, so less food miles, but also improving our food security uh, in the UK, having to less need to rely on our neighbours for food. Obviously, the fully automated hydroponic system ensures each plant gets the correct amount of nutrients, there's no waste there, it's an efficient system, and obviously also by harvesting rainwater and using those good insects to control pests, um, it has features that make it uh, more sustainable. However, there are some disadvantages that we need to be aware of. First of all, the use of artificial light. So, particularly in dark winter months, that use of artificial light means that there's a, it's a bit of a blot on the landscape in terms of visual pollution and also light pollution. Uh, to keep those lights going, obviously a large amount of energy is needed uh, to power those greenhouses, so it's not sustainable in that respect. Um, 
in order to build such a large development, as you do with any development, there's obviously an impact on local ecosystems. Uh, and then finally, because this is a large company, most of the money generated is going to that large company, as opposed to uh, a local farming community. Right, so just to finish off then, an exam question that requires uh, an example, uh, and this one says, a large-scale agricultural development can bring both advantages and disadvantages. Explain this statement using an example you studied. And it's a six marker for the maximum we get are in this unit. And it says, first of all, there's a place there to name the development. Now, in terms of the mark scheme then, obviously you must refer to a specific large-scale development. Uh, and that's going to be phallic turf. Not here is the place where you would confuse and put in the agroforestry Mali uh, example. So the planet Earth is the one we need here. Um, and obviously, even if you've got some good knowledge of large-scale agricultural developments, unless you're referencing a specific example, you are going to be capped in your marks. And to get those full marks, really, we should be after three well-explained advantages and disadvantages, so two advantages, one disadvantage, or vice versa that's obviously specific to our example. And that could include any ones I've just gone through in this video. So things to do with improving food security, using the good insects for pest control, and then uh, light pollution by artificial light. So explaining those, making them specific to planet Earth, uh, will allow you to access those full marks there. So a rather straightforward question, really, once you've got that knowledge. Okay, well, that's it for this video. Next time, we're gonna start looking at strategies to create sustainable food supplies.